All right, so just, just to clarify, this is the CSE 140 class. Um, we're just going to wait for everyone to, to join. Can you all hear me well? So I, I see a message from uh, Nicholas Lee saying, honestly, I don't know how this class is going to work and what we need in preparation for this class other than the CS classes. Um, so, well, well, we'll cover that very soon. So welcome to the class. And uh, I, I will I will talk about the prerequisites. Um, but just to just to start uh, briefly, so so you need to know graphs, uh, like, you know, breakfast search, breakfast search, this kind of concept. Some idea about complexity theory, uh, just a bit of like, you know, for example, uh, ON squared versus ON, these kinds of like things. Um, we'll be assuming some knowledge about uh, basic knowledge about probability and statistics. Uh, so if you know what is a random variable, what is the probability density function, prob uh, probability cum cumulative uh, function. Um, Logical reasoning, um, the, the sort of like uh, key rules in there, um, like like logical tables. Um, but it's not it's not too difficult. So it's it's uh, these are these are hopefully things you have seen in uh, in previous CS classes or or rela related classes. Um, Uh, by, by the way, uh, why don't we, uh, I, I'm, I'm super happy to take uh, questions from the chat, but why don't you like turn on the camera so we can at least, uh, you know, uh, get to know each other a bit better and uh, yeah, you, you can feel free to ask questions uh, with voice and yeah, and we're going to start in a few minutes also, but feel free to start ahead, you can uh, ask any questions. Um, yeah, gotcha. Um, How is this class different from a CMPM 146 game AI? I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know uh, what that class uh, contains exactly and what, what the syllabus in, 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 there is. Um, uh, Professor, do we have a discussion session? Yes, we do. Actually, uh, there will be next week. Uh, I put the timetables on Canvas, on the homepage of Canvas. We have two discussion sessions. 
which will be led by uh, by uh, the two TAs. Um, uh, we do have to. We might um, have one of them uh, on Zoom. But this is something I'll, I'll speak to the TAs tomorrow, and we'll clarify that. We we haven't yet decided. We have two rooms booked for now, but if if there is popular demand and many of you would prefer to have one of them on Zoom, we can do that as well. So so I'm I'm quite flexible with the with the format and and the location of of it. Um, Let me check the email to see if there is anybody having trouble to connect. Uh, um, so far. Can I ask all of you to turn on your video cameras so we can sort of make this more engaging? And uh, yeah, so because I I feel quite alone right now over here, and we will, I will, it will be nice to see some faces and uh, and get to to know each other. Um. Hmm. Um, the class is, uh, how big is the, this class? Uh, the class is a uh, hundred spots right now, a hundred people uh, capped. Um, I'm trying to get, I, I was trying to get it a bit bigger, but, um, the, the room capacity is at a hundred. So, um, so basically that means, um, it's, it's tricky to, uh, to add anyone else from the waiting list until we move to a new room. And I don't know how possible it is, um, um yeah because because what how what happens is we have to find another class which is undersubscribed and we have to sw swap with with them so uh, i was talking to Leah and it's, um and, and i need to double check um uh with graders as well on the, whether i can i can increase the the class size but i'll i'll, I'll get to those uh, also in in the presentation um so let, let's again, I, I know, uh, let's try to open, turn on the video cameras so we can meet each other. I know some of you cannot, but I, I'm expecting at least 90% of people here to be able to, um, to turn on their cameras so, um, so we can see each other. Um. Hi, Swati and Fatima. Really great to see you both. Hello. Hi. I'm counting 58 people so far. Uh, hmm. Um, I will generally I will start on time. Um, so coming uh, coming up in the next sessions, but uh, but for now we can wait for a few more minutes. Um, um, hmm. So we have 80 students right now.
<clears throat> and also another, so another logistical um, announcement. So we have, we have heard that uh, today and tomorrow it, it's all remote. Um, so we, we, we are still to hear back whether Wednesday will be remote. But for now, Wednesday will be in person. Um, and you have the location on Canvas. Um, if we get uh, different guidance by tomorrow to to move Wednesday on Zoom, we will we'll, yeah, we'll I'll let you know. Um, after another email tomorrow. Um, okay, I, th I think we're good. We have 101 people right now, and, and a few more joining. Um, let's get started. So, um, welcome everyone to. CSE 140, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. Um, I'm Razan Marinescu, so I'm um, just to, um, to tell you a few words about me and my research. And, uh, and I thought it would be nice so I can say, say a few words about me and then we can all try to meet each other. I wanted to like, yeah, hear a bit about you and um, let, let, let's, let's, uh, so let's do that first before we start into the course. So, um, so I, so I joined the Santa Cruz recently, last year. Um, I was teaching a CSC uh, 242 uh, in the previous term. So that was that was machine learning. Uh, so now I'm teaching CSC 140. Um, my previous research was on machine learning in healthcare. So, I, so I've done a lot of research in, uh, in how to use AI methods and machine learning methods for diagnosis, for, for automatic diagnosis of uh, brain images. I worked on brain images uh, from people with Alzheimer's disease in particular, but any kind of brain disease I was, I was particularly interested in. The idea was to take these these brain images and and run diagnosis on them automatically and do what a doctor does in a hospital. Um, I think it's really fascinating how uh, how AI um, what AI can do in um, in um, you know in healthcare, but also and, and you've seen many examples also in other domains in, in computer vision for self driving cars for. Um, text um, generation, text understanding for natural language processing. You've seen chat GPT-3, I'm pretty sure. Um, um, yeah, so, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like applications that we can use AI, but in my research has been in the last few years in, in on medical AI. And, um, and I can tell you, I, I'll try to give you also like a, a lot of examples uh, in, in, in not, not only in computer vision and NLP, but also on medical applications, you know, for, uh, for the key concepts we'll be studying, um, I I was I was for a number of years in in London uh, in the UK. Um, I spent three years in Boston at MIT uh, be right before coming here. Um, yeah, and um, I yeah I'm 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 very open to if you ask me ask me any questions about also about, about the course about my research anytime. Um, yeah, and feel free to interrupt me also during this uh, this. Yeah, they did this presentation. So, um, so how about okay? So how about we try to get to know each other a bit better? I want to. Uh, so let, let's let's see um, how do we do this because we have quite a big class. Um, so let, let, let's let's see um, on on the chat. Can you can uh, can you type what is your current major on the chat? So to, just to get a bit, just quickly like what 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 is your major? Just just type uh -huh. computer science, CS. So everyone here is in CS. Um, um, yeah, it, it is an upper division course. Um, I see a few others from other uh, majors, computer engineering. I see uh, CS and GD. I suppose it's graphic design, um, arts and design. Um, what what is um, no? Um, have you taken any AI or machine learning classes before? And which ones? Can you type the the courses you took? No. I see 144, 142, no, 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 no. Okay, so for most of you, this is the first, your first AI class. This is nice. Um, took 144 with uh, Nargis, nice, nice. YouTube, oh, it's always a great resource. Um, how about, um, what, uh, say among these things, among probability and stats, uh, linear algebra, logic uh and and graphs which ones have you done just write the keywords mm -hmm. just write them quickly um, all of them stats linear algebra all 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 nice nice not stats uh-huh 
yeah so so in general and anyway we we here even if you haven't um done some of them we can uh, help you with that get your prerequisites up to shape so so my ta so fatem and swari will be will be here and they and they will have um office hours and discussion sessions and um, and maybe in discussion sessions um next week we can do a, a short recap if you need on uh, any of these uh, key concepts before we 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 go full speed into into core um uh, how heavy is the course focus around stats? Um, um, some some of it, we, we will cover um, uh, statistical learning techniques, like Bay we'll do some Bayesian networks, we'll do, uh, it's not, it's less than uh, the machine learning course. It's, so it's it's less stats than uh, than you would do in uh, CSE 242, for example, or CSE uh, 142. Um, this, uh, so I would say around half, a uh, half of the course will be around stats or around 40%. Um, but less than the others. Um, yeah. So what? What else? Um, what should I ask? What question should I ask? Uh, I'm thinking. What? Uh, we have a Discord channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so. Okay. So how about? Um, um swati and fateme so let me introduce my my tas do you want to say a couple of things about yourself and yeah uh swati do you want to say hi uh, yeah or... uh hi everyone i'm swati and uh, i'm a fifth year phd student in computer science right now and my area is computer vision with specialization is gate with specialization in gaze tracking so i'm looking forward to being TA this course Uh, hi everyone, my name is Fatima and I'm also a FFCR PhD candidate in uh, uh, getting my PhD in computer science and I'm working in the same lab with Swati and my uh, research area is building an assistive technology to help uh, visually impaired people to find their way in indoor places. And I am looking forward to work with you all. Thanks. Great, great. Um, any, any, any general questions? Any questions about it before we we start uh, into some of the things? So, so I'll stop here for a few seconds. Anything? It's all pretty quiet so far. How many assignments will there be this quarter? Uh, uh, four problem sets. We'll have also like uh, quizzes, and we also have uh, worksheets. Uh, we'll say it's 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 we have a uh, it, it's a more complex structure than in other courses. We have three types of yeah assignments, but we'll yeah um, we'll, we'll go through them in more detail, especially in the discussion sessions. My, my TAs will go through them uh, next week in the, yeah in the discussion sessions more carefully. Um, our assignments all individual or group. Um, there will be group assignments for the problem sets. Uh, the worksheets are individual. Um, how do they navigate a textbook that's in the syllabus? Um, um, sorry, I'm laughing. How do we navigate a textbook that's in the syllabus? What do you mean by that? Uh, oh, I see. I see. I, I posted. Yes, I posted in the syllabus the textbook. Um, I know it can be harder to follow a, a textbook sometimes. I think the, the, the general idea is that we will um, give you like the, 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 the key points in the course, and then you can go to the textbook to have some more in-depth understanding and also to like get clarifications for many things. And of course, you can also come to our office hours, but, uh, but I would say, so use the course to navigate the, the textbook, basically. We will navigate to the key chapters and concepts from the textbook. Um, Will future lectures be recorded? Yes, we will record the lectures. Um, oh, and also, so please feel free to unmute yourself. If, if even if you don't turn on the camera, you can also ask questions like that. I would, yeah, I would appreciate to have a bit more interactivity than just from the chat. Um, what will be? Uh, no, what will the final contain? <laughs> well, well, I cannot tell you that. It's a, uh, <laughs> um, but we will go. Um, 
we uh, I cannot tell you what the what the promise will be in the final, but we will go beforehand before the final. We will. Um, we, I'm happy to do some kind of like exercises, some kind of practice uh, sort of like exercises before the final. And but we'll we'll just talk about that closer to the date. What makes you excited about AI in the upcoming future? A lot of things. I um, I think it's a great transformative technology that will change a lot of a lot of domains. Like as we said, like the transport industry with self-driving cars, healthcare. It can impact all these things. It can impact finance. It, it's, it's been impacting uh, all these domains and. Um, we um we still have so much more to do so much uh like for example robotics as well we don't we yet don't have robots that do all kinds of smart th uh, things around the house we don't have a uh, proper self-driving cars yet um so so we um uh, you know there's a lot to be lots to be excited about um uh, what do you think about chat gpt i i i i think it's a great i think it's a great step in the in the direction of having uh, models that understand language and text, um, there's much more that it needs. This uh, ChatGPT still has many, many limitations. And um, I was trying to use it, for example, to generate Python code, and it was uh, giving errors. It wasn't the code was running, but it wasn't running. It wasn't giving the correct answer. So, so it has a lot more to do. Uh, what's the difference between AI and ML? Um, um ml is a subset of ai ai contains also um it's like non ml topics like some non ml topics that are in ai for example like more logical reasoning um th these kinds of things like classical symbolic reasoning is is part of ai but not uh not ml ml focuses more on statistical learning methods and also data data driven methods methods that need a lot of data um ai generally ai classical ai methods work with knowledge uh, like knowledge databases so, so or, and they have like a knowledge data set or or logical rules and they make inference from uh, those rules um can i make an ai to pass this class <laughs> great question um no no you cannot um do, do i have an opinion about ai generated art um That's a great question. Um, I um, yeah, there, I think there's a lot to say there, but um, I, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll just give like a very uh, broad, make a very broad statement just to say that yeah, that there's a lot, that there's a lot to do in general AI generated art and. Um, there's this issues about IP, intellectual property, about who owns the uh, you know the um, the art, whether it's the algorithm or whether it's the creator. Um, so I think there's a lot of discussion and more like a, a legal conversation there about yeah what what that is. Um, I just meant that when um, okay, so I'll, I'll skip this. It's too long. Will this class be conceptual or applied AI focus? Um, it will be uh, both. It will be uh, both conceptual. We I want you to understand key concepts in AI, but also to be able to apply them. So to use, I want you to know how to apply them in 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 uh, on key applications. Um, we'll do, for example, we, we'll we'll have a really nice, uh, really nice um, um, coursework on uh, on Pac-Man on building Pac-Man agents and and the games and Pac-Man was super interesting. We'll have a tournament at the end of the class where these agents will compete against each other. Uh, it will be it will be a lot of fun. Um, on uh, so so it is both conceptual and applied. Do we need a good perfor uh, performance PC for machine learning? Uh, yes, but we'll run a lot of it on uh, on servers or on clusters. You won't need to run it on your machine, but we you need the, the really good. Um, machines in general to do these kinds of uh, um, yeah experiments. Uh, do you know Lex Friedman? I uh, I know of him. I don't know him personally. Uh, I have followed uh, some of his podcasts. Um, um, codes uh, permission codes for the class. Uh, I I uh, as I said, the room is currently at capacity. So uh, until until I I 
can get permission codes, we have to figure out whether we can actually move to a new room. If it won't be possible for us to move to a new room, we will unfortunately be limited at 100 people because that, that's the capacity of the room. I, I would generally be able to um, um, to accept uh, people from the waiting list, but because of this uh, room capacity issue, we might uh, be more limited. Um, um, we'll be doing some RL, yes. We'll be doing some reinforcement learning, yes. Um, so... Um, okay, I think I think we got a lot. So let, let's let's uh, let's get going. Uh, so I'll share my screen. Um, but uh, feel free to post any questions uh, in the chat, and also please unmute yourself. I, I want this to be more interactive, also with voice. Um, I, I don't want to talk just myself. Um, let me let me share my screen. Um, One. one second. Uh, uh -huh. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. I I have I have a double monitor set up. Let me see because I'm trying to set up on the other monitor. Um, oh, this is nice. I can see both. I can see also your videos on the other monitor. Yeah. So um, and I can see the chat. Let me see if I can. Oh well. Actually, I cannot see the chat. Hmm. It's, uh, I, it's it's somehow strange that I don't see my cursor in Keynote. I have to turn it on somehow. Oh, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out afterwards. So, um, so as I said, so welcome to the class. Um, so, so today we'll cover a few like broad overviews about about the course. Um, so we'll do some, um, and, and we'll do, go over the, um, some lo key logistics, and and then we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about generally like about AI in general. What is AI, and what what will you be able to learn from this class? So, so, um, so as I said, the, the person also that so I, it's me teaching the the class, and then I also have office hours from four to six p.m., um, which will start next week. So so on Tuesday you can come to between four and six p.m. in my office. It's and it's also on Canvas. Uh, I, I forgot to put my office here, but you have all these videos on Canvas, and uh, um, and you can come to ask me any questions. Uh, my TAs Fatem and Swati, you, you just met, so. Um, and we also have, planning to hire graders. Uh, we're planning to hire two or three graders, um, and I'll, I'll get back on that uh, in, in the next class. Um, so, the, uh, by the way, this is an in-person class. Um, I do not recommend that you take the class remotely. Although I will, I will offer a Zoom link uh, that I will stream, and but that's only for those of you who, for some reasons, cannot uh, attend. For example, because if, if you're sick or. or and so on, but generally, this is an in-person class. I do not recommend that you take it remotely, because you'll um, it's it's a much better experience to be in person, and 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 you will have a group assignments as well that you'll have to work together with colleagues. Um, I will post lecture slides before the class, and also post recordings after the class. Um, so, uh, so generally, you'll find you'll find on Canvas there's a link with. Uh, with uh, pointing to uh, to to slides to to Google, uh, Google Drive folder, which will have slides. So, so you'll find all the all the lectures there. Um, for the waitlist students, so the room is currently at capacity. So we need to find a new room first before we um, before I can give you any permission codes. Uh, so that that's uh, that's currently, and I can I cannot guarantee it right now. I'm in the discussions with Leah and with uh, Sarah to. Um, to get that, but but we I do not guarantee that we can find a room. So I'll keep you updated. But also the other thing is, um, if you cannot attend it uh, this year, I, I strongly recommend that you uh, to take it in the next term. Actually, you can take it. Uh, this class will be offered in spring as well, so you can take it then. Um, 
So it's not a problem if you, if you miss uh, this, this one. Yeah. Um, we will use Piazza for communication. Uh, ask any questions about, about the content there. Um, and we will follow it uh, actively. Sorry about that. Um, so if you have a questions about core concepts, uh, uh, for example, from the slides and, and sort of from the textbooks, you ask me uh, all the TAs during office hours um, in, instead, of, instead of emailing or, or of course, ask, ask on Piazza. Um, so I, I, prefer to, I prefer Piazza instead of emails uh, simply because I, everyone else can also see the, uh, the answers uh, and this way we don't have to respond to the same question multiple times. Um, but if you have questions about assignments, questions or quizzes, do ask the TAs during the sessions because they'll be the ones running these and they'll know, uh, they'll know much better than me uh, the, all the ins and outs of these assignments and the questions. So, so do ask them about, uh, about this. Um, okay, so um, so, uh, so, so artificial intelligence, right? So you're taking an AI class. So, um, so many times uh, in the history of, of AI, uh, there's been a hype cycle. So, you know, when, when people started first talking about AI back in the 50s and 60s, when, when it, it just, they just started talking about it, like it, initially in the, in the 60s, there was a really great uh, enthusiasm about, uh, about AI. And, and there were a lot of like uh, research groups doing works on with the logical reasoning and all kinds of methods back then. And then uh, there was a, a disappointment period, let's say, or like a winter period in AI follow, that followed that. And then there was another uh, another spring in uh, back in the 80s, uh, again, a, a period of a lot of excitement um, back then to do with expert systems. And then there was another winter. So it, it went through these cycles of like um, it, be, it being very hyped. And then afterwards, it, it like everything was uh, um, sort of like everyone was disillusioned about, about the actual progress that was made. So um, it's... Um, yeah, so uh, I think, and I can say probably for sure that when, for the over the last ten years we've been again in a hype cycle, and then who knows whether what will we'll come next? We we'll have another winter, or I, I don't know. So time will tell. Um, so the goals of the course are to, first also to allow you to separate this hype from reality, because it could be important uh, uh, in in so many regards uh, to understand a bit of where we're in the cycle we are. To, to teach you some concrete AI tools and methodologies that is fundamental concepts that you can, that um, um, be, be, because then afterwards you'll be able to tell, to understand these fundamentally and you won't be able to like be swayed so easily by these headlines that, oh, like, uh, I don't know, um, AI uh, robots are going to take over the world or that kind of, you know, this kind of things like be, because you know how, you know, the fundamental concepts and, and you'll be able to, um, to know how far we still are from achieving those things. Um, also, to teach you responsible AI. Um, we'll, we'll be t covering a few things about responsible AI, but it, it won't be like, a, yeah. Uh, there's some other, I think there's another class that is offered at UCSC on responsible data science. That, that, could, that, that could be more, yeah. We could we'll cover much more in this particular um, part. And, and by the end of the class, you'll be a part of a select group of people that actually understands the basics uh, behind modern artificial intelligence systems. So, so that, that'll be really, really awesome. Um, so, so let's have a discussion. So what is AI? What is, um, what is artificial intelligence? So you've seen, you've seen the movies and you've read the books. So you, I, I suppose you've seen um, uh, or you've read iRobot by Isaac Asimov. You know, it was this like famous book back in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken, when he, when he wrote it. Um, uh, and and how robots had like three rules they had to obey. They had to like always like uh, protect human beings. They had to like protect themselves from self-harm uh, or not from harm. And, 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 and there was another rule. There were three main rules of robotics or in protect other human beings and so on. And yeah. There's also Westworld. You might have seen Westworld again, super uh, super popular um, um, series about artificial intelligence and robots. Ex Machina, um, again, a really popular AI mo movie, and also the 2001: A Space Odyssey, um, which had this that computer called HAL. Um, so, so again, it, it's been a lot in the movies and in the popular um, uh, sort of. Um, it's a like popular um, 
space. Um, but um, but what is actually AI? So let's say see some ideas. But can 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 you write in the chat what what do you think is AI? I want to hear the system. Let me try to open it up as well. So let, let, let's let's see what 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 is artificial intelligence. Uh, let's see some definitions in the chat. Um, a very fancy brute force method. So this is on crack. <laughs> um, can somebody unmute and give a definition of artificial intelligence? Let's do that. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I would say artificial intelligence is anything that tries to do pattern recognition on a data set, uh, that can then, uh, make decisions without any specific input. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, pattern recognition on a data set. Yes. 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 Kind of generalize like pattern recognition, I guess. Yeah. 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 Uh, somebody else had another answer also on, 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 on audio. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I, I like to think of it as like um, how we humans write software, but AI is like writing software. AI that is writing software. Yeah. 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 Um, that 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 is quite a uh, that is quite a hard task. So in general, so writing software is a hard task, and and not not even among humans. Many 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 of us don't know how to write software, and um, people on the world. So so it would be fantastic if we have an AI system that can do that, that can write any kind of software. Um, uh, one more answer, one final answer. Let's let's hear that. Uh, so again from audio. Um, yeah, kind of like what Lawrence said. Uh, I, I think it's like trying to uh, apply like techniques that humans would use in a sense like the way that we as humans think about something try uh-huh. to replicate uh-huh. that um through software like in order to have like the computer or some system do something that like a human would do and, and do it that that same way like think about it um and choose like the best possible path Yes, yes, yes. So you're talking about choose the best possible path. So uh, it it uh, reminds us a lot about uh, planning and like you know like uh, pathfinding this kind of thing, like planning uh, your way through, for example, uh, yeah, uh, an environment uh, and so on. Yeah, the, 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 that that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, there's um, um, so. Um, so let, let, we'll, we'll get back to that. So we'll get back to this definition, uh, actually. So let, let, let me say um, how how generally people uh, in the field think about it. So 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 we we think of it as a discipline that systematizes and automates intellectual tasks uh, to create machines, uh, intelligent machines, and more precisely, machines that act like humans, that think like humans, and also that think rationally and act rationally. And um, and and then this breakdown into these four um, components, like we'll, we'll let, let's talk a little one by one. What we mean by each of them? What do we mean by the bottom left that act like humans? So by acting like humans, um, this is a like behaviorist approach. It's basically we we we're not interested in how you get the results, but just uh, how. Uh, similar you are to human results so so in a sense you, we're not interested whether you how you get there just the actual is the final result if you act like a human it doesn't matter if you apply a deep learning method or if, if you apply a symbolic reasoning method if you run a gaussian process regression or support vector machines we're just interested in the result if you act like a human so if, if the result is a, is human-like then um and this, this is exemplified by the Turing test. How many of you have heard of that? Uh, just, just type a Y or in, in, in the chat about the, human, the Turing test. So I see Ys. Okay. Uh, mostly Ys. Mostly yeses. Nice. So so the Turing test, uh, yes. Um, and I won't go in that taste in too much detail. It's, it's basically a test that for those of you um, who, who might not have heard, it's just a, a test which 
tries to tell apart whether the, a system is is a human or 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 a machine. And and if you cannot tell apart which one is a human, which one is the machine, then the machine has passed the Turing test. Um, and um, sorry, so yeah, um, and and essentially, and there's a modern version of it called the Loebner contest, which is uh, kind of like uh, an annual contest which which gives a uh, Every year, a hundred k prize, and and uh, yeah, and this is kind of like a version of uh, of of the Turing test, and on on several tasks. So you can read more about it on uh, on that link. But um, but there is there is a, yeah, we have the concept of Turing test for that, just to 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 tell how close uh, the behavior of a machine is to that of a human. Um, but what about number two? Right, we 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 also said about. Uh, AIs that think like humans, systems that think like humans. What do we mean by think like humans? So, so here we want to to think uh, to make a computer think exactly how the human thinks uh, and how it, so, so, so to imitate exactly the thinking process, not just the end result, but the the thinking process, how it got there. And and for example, the reasoning steps. If there's a logical reasoning argument to follow the same reasoning steps that that got the human there, so to make the computer follow the same steps, and it's actually very um, linked with cognitive science. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of testable theories about the workings of the human mind here uh, that, um, uh, that, that 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 you can do. Like um, if if we are able to understand the human mind and how it works, then you can basically implement that in a computer and make the computer follow a thing like the human mind does so um and then there was a, there was a system early back in the 60s called the general problem solver that was trying to attempt to do something like that kind of like a more like be more like a general like a problem solving technique and but i won't go into too much detail um into it um um but uh, and another key question that that comes here when we try to make machines uh, imitate humans is for example do we also want to duplicate human imperfections do we want to sometimes humans make a lot of mistakes and have a lot of biases in their thinking process in their behavior um do we want to take the same biases that humans have sometimes uh, maybe not so um um we uh, yeah this, this, this raises quite a few ethical questions as well um when we build the systems but what about number three? What about thinking rationally? Uh, what do we mean by uh, making a machine that thinks rationally? So, so this is more about um, related to like um, how the ancient Greeks used to think of things. They used to think of that there's like laws of thought and that there's several correct arguments for different um, processes. And um, and the, again, the ancient Greeks uh, developed uh, several forms of logic with the notation and, and specific rules. And, and and this is what I mean by rationality, and and uh, sort of so then, um, one one way to to build it is uh, build uh, AI systems that are intelligent is to make them think rationally. So um, um, so to take the rational decisions every single time. Um, and uh, one some key problems here with this approach is that it's not easy to translate informal real world problems into formal terms that uh, you know and, and express them with rationality and so on. So this is something that is that is generally uh, quite quite hard to do. And and for simple problems like some games, like like for example chess or a simple environments, um, that that is possible uh, to is it is possible to. Um, to represent them you know, easily, but but for some for the real world in general, it's very complex, and and sometimes we cannot uh, easily represent it and and think uh, with such logical uh, rules. Um, yes, and and number four is also acting rationally. So so we want um, um, we also want want machines to be able to act rationally. So so then. Um, so this was exactly as as we were saying earlier about how sometimes what the end maybe matters, not 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 how it got there. So so as long as they act rationally and do the right thing, maybe it doesn't matter how they got there, how they made the decision. Um, and sometimes they can make a decision with the perfect knowledge and unlimited resources, and they can so they can apply a full logical reasoning uh, process. But some other times maybe they have imperfect knowledge and they have limited the uh, computational resources. So then. 
that that's more related to limited rationality, what is vocal limited rationality, and uh, and and it's something we might have to do in for many cases because it might be intractable to uh, to perfectly cover, for example, the whole graph and find uh, the shortest path uh, or and so on for a particular problem. So. Um, and there's a lot of connections here with economics, with the operations research uh, and control theory. Um, but here, the, the, this, this kind of approach uh, with rationality generally ignores the role of consciousness, emotions, fear of dying, and so on. All these kinds of, like, let's say, human aspects about, um, ab about us. And, um, yeah, and, uh, and maybe they are important. Maybe, and, and probably they are important so, uh, to model and understand. So, uh, so I'm... Uh, so a machine that acts completely rationally we might not be able to understand each of these uh, and and sort of like understand why humans are taking certain actions. Um, okay, so why don't we do um, a short quiz right now? Let me let me let me see uh, let me see how we're doing with time. Uh, we we're good with time. So um, so l l let's let's do a short quiz and on the definition of AI. So. Um, so we'll do the following. So, um, over here, yeah. Um, so, so how about we you all connect here and uh, and so so you go to joinmyquiz.com and enter this code and we'll do like an interactive quiz with like. Uh, about these definitions of AI and and we'll um we'll compare the answers among the class um among everyone in the class so so again join my quiz.com go here and uh, and type this code so I'm starting seeing people three four five great Come on, is, is everybody in? Um, I, I still see there's 111 people in the Zoom, so maybe we have 88 that signed up. Let's uh, let's let's wait for a few more seconds. Okay, um, I think I think we can get started. So so we're we'll starting three, two. Okay, I see a few more joining. Okay, we're starting in three, two, one, let's go. So what is your definition of, uh, of AI? And you have two minutes uh, for this one. So you have to write on, on your laptops or on your mobile phone. What is your definition of AI? And we'll, we'll check them afterwards. And you can still join the quiz. You can you can still join. Um, you have the the link here on the bottom and the code here. If you haven't joined, you can still join the quiz. I posted it also in the group chat. And then after that, we can compare answers and uh, see what, yeah, see what everyone says. Okay, 30 seconds left. 
So make sure you put your answers in. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, a computer system that a computer system that tries to emulate rational thought. That's 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 good. That's good. Um, something that recognizes a pattern and responds according to that pattern. Any that has the capability to learn based on data and make these different decisions based on what it has learned. Nice, nice. A computer program that can learn and improve. Software imitating human actions and thinking. I like all of these. I like all of these. Um, a computer system that is able to process inputs rationally and behave like a human would based on those inputs. So again, this so this brings a uh, rationality into 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 account here and, and behaves like a human based on those inputs. A piece of technology that has the ability to think for itself and build off of itself. So this, is a, uh, this also brings into account bootstrapping. So build off of itself. Uh, so very interesting. Um, a model that, that attempts to be intelligent and mimic human behaviors to accomplish a task. Nice, nice. Let's see, let's see a few more. A computer or other man-made object that has the ability to emulate the thinking process and behavior of humans or animals. Great. That's, that's, that's a great answer. Um, yeah. Man-made object. So I like, it, I like it. It doesn't just refer to computers, but could be other kinds of systems. Who knows? Um, when a computer is programmed to attempt a task that usually requires a human touch. For example, making art, writing a program, yes. So, so in general, human ta human uh, tasks that we do are generally quite complex, and yes, and and that's when we know we have the certain level of intelligence. Um, um, using the technology to mimic and recreate actions that can be done by humans, but in a more efficient and enhanced manner. Artificial intelligence is a machine that is able to learn and change its behavior based on what it has learned. Um, yeah, without being told in what ways to change. So that's 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 really interesting. It's making a good point. Is to, talking about learning, the learning process, and how it can change and keep on learning and and change its behavior without being told. Um, okay, these are all really good questions. Uh, really good questions. Um, really, really good answers. Sorry. Um, so let, let's go to the next question. We have one more question in the quiz. Um, yeah, and then that's the final one. Mm -hmm. So three, two, one, go. Your previous definition of AI is closest to which one of the four that we spoke about? Act like humans, think like humans, think rationally, or act rationally? Twenty five seconds left. Ten seconds. You can choose multiple answers, by the way. So let's see, let's see the results. Okay, so, so we got quite an even number of responses across all the four. This is super interesting. So 26 of you said more like act like humans, 26 more like think like humans, 23 think rationally, 26 act rationally. So it can be all four of them. It can be any combination. Um, so this was, this was a poll, but in general, all of these are correct. Uh, in general, we... Yeah, um, there's no one wrong answer generally. Um, 
but uh, they all they all see the pr problem from a different lens. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's a short quiz. Now let's go back to. Um, Yeah, to our, to our class. Um, actually, how about um, one thing? How about we take a five minute break here? Uh, because actually, it's a good point to take a break, and we can continue afterwards after the after the break. In general, and I'll give you like generally a, a break in between um, in these. Uh, yeah, so let's take let's take a five minute break, or even even a seven minute break, seven minute break, and we'll come back in seven minutes to continue. Um,
Okay. Um, I think we can continue. Um, so. Can you all still see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so. Um, so what uh, as you saw it was it was very interesting i have to say it was very interesting to see all your different definitions of ai and you know in, in the first question and how you know some more focused on rationality some more focused on uh, on how it compares with human um uh behaviors and and so on and yeah um it was very interesting and 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 how we they, we can all like um sort of kind of mapped into some of these four uh four big ideas like um yeah um now let, let me say a few uh, uh words about the history of artificial intelligence and how we got here uh, to where we are now so so some of these um people started talking about artificial intelligence like for the very first time around the 1940s and 1950s this were really early days uh, when computers were kind of barely starting to appear uh, around the same roughly around that time and um and those were back then those were like big computers big mainframe computers not not what we have now um but in 1943 for example the McCullough and Pitts published this model of a of a neuron like a, a, a basically it's called the boolean circulator model of, of brain and by the basically it was yeah it was a neuron that was kind of like a linear combination of its inputs and and it was trying to sort of like mimic uh that math mathematical model although simple it was trying to mimic what a neuron does and how it fires and so on and how it gets activated um and then back in 1950 uh Alan Turing published the computing machinery and intelligence uh, work, and that um, and that that's when he also like devised the Turing test and 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 a lot of like um, um, a lot of these ideas that we that we yeah I'll talk about and 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 I think he he also mentioned about artificial intelligence back then, but but he thought uh, he said like oh that that's probably something that might never happen, uh, but well it's, surely it's happening now in our in our in our time, uh, but back then. It seemed like a very distant dream, um, and um, and then what happened was that there was a a, a period between nineteen fifties and nineteen seventies of extreme excitement about about AI. There was there was a period where uh, this was let's say one of the first like AI springs. There was a lot of excitement. People were uh, working on symbolic approaches. They seemed to be doing a lot of uh, making a lot of ground, and um, they kept on solving more and more puzzles and like all kinds of uh, tasks like. Uh, uh, powers of Hanoi was a kind of like a typical problem that was being solved back in those days with with uh, these kinds of uh, AI systems. Um, there was a meeting in 1956 at Dartmouth that was titled Artificial Intelligence, and that's when uh, this the the field the, that, that's one of the let's say one of the meetings that started the field of artificial intelligence, and that's when I think the 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 word artificial intelligence was was first um, uh, developed. This this term was coined at AI. Um, and uh, and then um and then there was a period of a, there was there was a period of a, again there was an ai winter that followed afterwards of a period of a, a disappointment and then there was another spring afterwards another period of excitement that came again in the uh late se uh, in the 70s and actually in the 80s uh that was uh, led by expert systems so that was like a, a time when these expert systems were being developed and it was a um Many many companies in industry were were thought that oh this this is a sort of like uh, incredible and amazing and they can solve all kinds of uh, problems um, and then afterwards but that, that eventually again led to another period of disappointment and led to another AI winter uh, after 1988 and everything kind of went bust like many of those companies went bankrupt um, and there was no more funding for AI again for a number of years um, and. Um, and then there was a lot of work that happened after that uh, on statistical approaches, on approaches more like bottom-up approaches uh, that use the probability. Um, uh, for, there was a focus on uncertainty modeling, like Bayesian uh, type of methods. Um, and then there was a lot of increase in technical depth that, that the field made. Um, and 
and then there was another spring that started uh, we, we back in the, around 2012 and that was the, mostly led by deep learning and in general also like machine learning and reinforcement learning and here and one of the main driving forces was data here it was a lot of the fact that we had a lot of data uh because of uh, the internet because of uh, all all of us taking pictures with our phones all of us uh, writing text on uh, online and and uh, and so big data was one of the main driving forces that uh, of uh, of uh, the last AI sp spring uh, that started around 2010, uh, but in the, from the late 2000s onwards, and um, and uh, and that's where we how we got here. Basically, um, it's it, it was um, it was quite a windy road, we were up here and down here and so on, and uh, and uh, and and who knows? We I think I think we still have a quite a lot of way to go to to solve some really hard problems even 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 nowadays so um so who knows what what's going to happen in the future um um let's actually let, let's talk a bit about it let's, let's talk a bit about the present what um uh, what can ai do at the moment what can ai do today in in the in our in 2023 um let, let's let's do again let, let's i want i want to hear and this is again i want to hear all of you um let me i'll bring up my chat window in the other monitor so i want to see um what from you like what are, what are your thoughts like for example can uh can an ai system play a decent game of table tennis uh, right in the chat so yes or no um or, or y or n um What do you think? Do you think yes or do you think no? I see most of the yeses. Um, yes. So the, the the answer is yes. So so right now we can we have robots that can play a decent game of table tennis. Actually, um, what about uh, can an AI drive safely along a curvy mountain road? Uh, yes or no? And mostly yeses. I see a few no's. Uh, kind of not safely uh-huh mostly um i would also say pretty much yes yes um maybe there's some edge cases again there like i'm pretty sure you can uh, yeah if if i don't know if it's if it's raining very badly or if it's snow or if it's if it's some kind of situation it hasn't seen before then it might have quite a lot of trouble but uh yeah generally let's say it can um can it drive can an ai drive safely on along pacific avenue um, which is the, the the road downtown uh, in Santa Cruz? Again, mostly yeses, uh, no. Um, yeah. Um, so I I I put that with the dots. I didn't. I don't. Um, I didn't put a definite yes. Mostly because I thought, uh, well, if uh, there's a lot of pedestrians sometimes that cross, and 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 who knows? Like, um, um, yeah. Then there's a lot of yeah. Even. Uh, there's a lot of traffic there so so um uh yeah i um maybe the jury is still out with you on that one um how about can can an ai buy a week's worth of groceries on the web can can an ai do that uh, yes or no i say again yes is um yes it can so it can this this can be done um on the web what about can an ai buy a week's worth of groceries at safeway like you know can it go a safeway and uh uh, and 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 get your groceries for you. Um, so I see mostly no's. Um, um, yeah, why is that? Let's see. Let's hear an answer, an audio answer. Why? Why do you think that's the case? Why you cannot do it? Anybody? Needs a physical robot that can grab things, no physical shape. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Too much unpredictable variables going to safely and back. Yeah, yeah. So we need this kind of like, yeah, you need like a robot to go and grab things or some kind of, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a human or robot, but even, yeah, uh, a rover like that. But it, yeah, it's too complicated. Um, um, yes. Um, can an AI discover and prove a new mathematical theorem? Let's see. Let's see. Mostly knows. Possible, I don't know. Possibly knows. One yes, two yeses. Yeah, I would say sometimes. Um, so there, ha there have been some um, 
mathematical, let, let's say like simple problems and simple theorems they can do. Um, uh, I've seen somewhere from some articles I've wrote that they're kind of at the level of a ninth grader uh, in certain aspects. But again, this is like an oversimplification. Um, I've I've seen an article, for example, there was a, there was a recent study published by DeepMind where they improved on a Strachan's algorithm, for example. So they improved on a on an algorithm that performs matrix multiplication, uh, and that was also like specific to certain hardware. But but again, it, it, I think it counts, uh, and and that's quite a yeah. That's that's a computer science algorithm that that AI improved. Um, and then there's been a few other works. So, so I think this this making a lot of progress actually, and I think it we will see more of those within the next few years, um, more and more of these mathematical theories being proven. Um, so actually, I would say sometimes, yes, it's not too fully a no. Sometimes they can prove mathematical theorems, which is, a, again, incredible. Um, um, can, a, can AI converse successfully with another person for an hour? Yes or no? Yeah, in, yeah, I see mostly yeses. Yeah, um, uh, although I'm actually a bit surprised by by this one, I uh, I tried to converse with Amazon Alexa, uh, for example, but it wasn't too successful. Like, I mean, they can do basic things, but um, um, with Chat GPT three, that, that that's quite that's much better. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, um, he he had in mind a bit more like audio kind of like conversations, um, but um, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't personally been engaged. That's all again with Amazon Alexa when I was speaking to it. It, it definitely wasn't keeping me engaged for an hour. I was, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, but maybe as, as a chat bot, yes. That might be, yeah. Um, can an AI perform a complex surgical operation? Yes, no, no, no. Some yeses. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Possible if the robotics is advanced enough. Maybe, um, so so in general, no. Uh, so right now, um, the um, there are robots. There are medical ro uh, surgical robots. For example, Da Vinci is one of the most famous ones. But generally, uh, surgeons operate them uh, through like a camera, and they have like these kind of joysticks and like hands, and and basically they they can operate them quite well and stuff. But um, but it's not been done by an AI and and at most they people are working on uh, assisted technologies that that assist the surgeon but not not something that that I think we're still quite far away to having a, an AI do a full surgical operation uh, by itself um, but people are working on it actually it's, it's a really active uh, research area I've yeah I've I've interacted with quite a few people again I've, I've been working on medical AI so I've worked I've interacted with Quite a few people who work in a, yeah in a surgical robotics. It's, it's a really really fascinating uh, research field. Um, can an AI unload the dishwasher and put everything away? Yes or no? No. Yes. No. No. Mostly no's. Um, it's actually a yes, actually. So there, there, there are robots that do this. Actually, if you can Google, Google them, like you find on YouTube a few videos that they can do that. So, so there are, yeah, there are robots that can already do this. Um, can an AI translate spoken Chinese into spoken English in real time? Yes. So this is all, yeah, this all exists. Yes. So, so we have that. Can an AI write an in intentionally funny story? Yes. Um, I see mostly yeses, so that yes, so that's true, especially with ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Um, yeah, so these were the ones. Okay. Yeah, so so we see there is quite a lot of quite a lot of things that AIs can do already uh, nowadays. This is an, in, at present at the moment, and and there's still more that they cannot do with that people are working on. So. So what about the predictions uh, that have been made in the past? So for example, there was in the 60s, there was a famous uh, AI professor from MIT that said, at the end of the summer, we will have developed an electronic eye. And um, um, and that was that didn't happen. Even nowadays, we, don't, we do not have uh, uh, sophisticated and robust, especially robust uh, vision systems, computer vision systems. Because for example, we do... Uh, 
we see proof of that and we don't have uh, yet uh, self-driving cars uh, all, all around that take us, uh, drive us around. Because for that, we need a sophisticated, uh, again, um, vision systems. As of today, there is still no general computer vision system capable of, yeah, so this is what I was saying. Um, um, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so, so another prediction that was made uh, by Herbert Simon from CMU in 1958 was that uh, he said that within 10 years that a computer would be uh, a chess champion. And, um, however, that actually only came true uh, 40 years later in 1998 uh, when a, a IBM Deep Blue beat Kasparov at the at, at the game of chess. So, so again, it's um, sometimes some of these uh, predictions that people made could be quite um, well. Yeah, could, could turn out to be to be yeah, so, some, yeah, quite inflated. So, so in practice, the, the problems um, seem to be much harder than we think initially. So, so, so for example, the game of chess was was a particularly hard problem that that took around forty years to crack. Um, and today we have computers that won over world champions in many several games, not just chess, but also checkers, Othello, and even more simply Go without a Go from DeepMind. Um, also in the 70s, uh, many people believed that computer controlled robots would soon be everywhere, from manufacturing plants to home. And um and today, this is not true. Like in some industries, uh, for example, in automobile and electronics, these are highly robotized in factories. But for example, in uh, home robots are still still far away. Uh, it seems like it's, it's, it doesn't seem so far that they're penetrating uh, our homes. So we don't have robots. Uh, well, I would say actually, except for Roombas and like uh, vacuum cleaning robots, most of the other ones, like for example, robots that clean the dishes, robots that cook uh, your omelet in the morning. We don't have any of these um, that are able, we, anything that can remotely do them. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah. Um, for example, so, so developing a, a robot that cooks a recipe, uh, actually, uh, it's, it's quite a daunting challenge. There's a lot of coordination tasks that you have to solve. You have to go to the fridge, open a door, grab the ingredients, grab the eggs, grab the cheese and so on, put them on the counters. Well, take the eggs, crack them in the pan just to make an omelet, just make a simple omelet to do all these things, all these. And that, that's very difficult for a robot to do, especially in all these, I can say heterogeneous environments at home because all of our homes are so different. Our kitchens will have different layouts and so on. And they'll they'll need to adapt very quickly. And we don't have the technology yet to make them adapt so quickly to, to all these the new environments. Um, but however, uh, robots have rolled on Mars. For example, we send robots to Mars. We have uh, some robots that assist surgeons. So, so we have in some applications, it's it's quite interesting to see how we 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 have robots uh, like uh, that are on Mars and you know, they can they can go around. Uh, sometimes even uh, without instructions, they by themselves they decide what uh, steps to take and so on. But we don't have still robots in our homes, which is again still quite. Uh, Quite uh, quite fascinating to think about how yeah how we have robots on Mars but not not in our homes. Uh, professor, yeah, might I ask? Um, do you yeah. have a prediction of maybe when this might happen? When when yeah. are we to have robots in our homes? Like like for example, like the one that would be able to cook a, an omelet. Yeah, like that. Um, you know, it, it, it's actually hard, very hard to make accurate predictions about these things. I, I think that's quite a hard problem. It might take, it might take, who knows, maybe twenty years, not twenty years, maybe thirty years. I would say. Uh, I was kind of say, I, I, I don't want to make like, yeah. Um, it, it, these are hard problems. Like even, uh, I, I know for us they're easy uh, to to make an omelet, for example. But there's a, there's a lot of things going on there, and. Um, I think one thing that might uh, that we have to solve that might be more reachable is whether we can make uh, learning algorithms that are adaptable to um, regardless of the body, like the, regardless of the body of the robot. If the robot has two arms or three arms, or um, you know a particular shape and so on, or size, like we want to be able to make learning algorithms that are uh, adaptable to the type of robot that executes them. And I think that's something that that will be, that will be the, the next key challenge to crack. Like you know, you you don't want to code an, uh, 
uh, a learning algorithm for a particular shape of robot. And then when you change to three arm robot, or I don't know, in a few years, you have to redo it from scratch. We have yeah. to be able to learn them automatically. So I think that that will be one of the next breakthroughs we have to we have to do somehow to be able to learn adaptively regarding of your body, regarding of the body of the robot, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. cool, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you have any other questions, please interrupt me anytime. So, so I, I want this to be interactive. Uh, I, I, I really like it and prefer it to to have questions. So do do stop me. Oh, uh, so do you think the humanoid is the right architecture? Might be not. It might not be actually. I, I think actually we 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 are thinking too much. Uh, we're not thinking outside the box when we we yeah. think human or robots just because we we're so familiar with with us as humans. But actually, there might be better bodies, much better bodies, depending on the tasks of the robots that they have to do. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we're not thinking enough outside the box uh, actually here. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of robots I've seen. When, when I was uh, uh, doing my postdoc at MIT, I saw, like, I mean, there were research groups, for example, who were looking into like fish robots, like all kinds of like, you know, robots that would just like articulate, like, you know, on uh, including all kinds of animals, so, like, you know, at sea. Um, there, there's this like uh, researchers doing like soft robotics, like um, that have like, these are robots that can change their shape very easily. And they, they have these kind of like, actuators uh, i think they called i'm not a robotics person i think they called actuators basically like they can um there, there's some mechanical strings that can pull and push and basically they can change their shapes very very easily um and there's all kinds of technologies some also based on magnets there's also uh, this uh, there, there's really interesting uh, uh bodies that the robots can uh, basically take and some of them can be very soft so so anyway soft robotics is a very um it's a very uh, interesting research area these days, um, and it's and it's hard, if not easy, uh, to do uh, these kinds of robots. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so what? Why is artificial intelligence hard? Why is it such a hard problem? So, so sometimes one one reason is because, uh, uh, for example, simple to give an example, um, sometimes simple static manipulation uh, is not enough what we have to do so for example there, there was a, there's a story of um when people were trying to, in america they were trying to do machine translation back in the 50s so this was after the ussr launched the satellite in space the first satellite in space sputnik and and it was a big project in the u.s they were trying to like uh and it was in the cold war they were trying to get uh, many documents from the russians and uh, and they were trying to translate these uh, russian documents using ai systems um, like AI translation tools, and and for, there was a particular type of um, um, there was this particular sentence that was shown. For example, the uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Um, but actually, the 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 real translation should have been the vodka is strong, but the meat is rotten. So, so so I think it's just kind of like showing a bit how uh, these systems are sort of like they. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's, it seems like a, yeah, it, we go into stereotypes here a bit, I guess, but, but I, we shouldn't go to stereotypes. Um, um, and uh, yeah, like the, um, so what, what, I, what I want to highlight with this example is the fact that even though sometimes you can match them word by word, like you can sort of translate, oh, this word matches to that, and which, but sometimes there's a whole context around everything and like a, even a semantics sometimes this is much more than just like taking each individual word and translating them and this is uh often the very hard part and um and this is for example why it fails so miserably this particular example because it was kind of doing word by word translation or kind of like that and but actually this there was a much more bigger context in the whole thing so uh that 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 they yeah um i hope it makes sense but but anyway yeah um I think it shows a bit that it's just not enough to just take uh, individual pieces bit by bit. You have to look in the broader picture. Let me check the time, how it's okay. So it's 6.30 or 6.40, we have time. Um, so, so why is AI hard? Again, another problem is that we have computational intractability issues. So in general, a lot of these problems are very, very uh, hard and they take a lot of computational time and energy. And... Um, 
Um, and sometimes I, I don't know, some of you might not uh, be familiar with uh, NP completeness and this notion of complexity, but uh, generally, a lot, generally a lot of problems are uh, in a lot of search problems, AI problems are NP complete. Uh, and that means they're very hard. Uh, they're very hard to solve. And uh, theoretically, there's no good algorithms that can solve them in, in a, let's say polynomial times what they call it. Um, I, I won't go into complexity theory in this course, but I'm I'm assuming you might be a little familiar a bit with the jargon of uh, this NP complete, NP hard, and so on. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, so so we need generally we need a lot of compute and and a, and a lot of like uh, yeah big computers that can solve these things. Um, and another thing, we also need um, even it's not enough to just have a compute. We also need sometimes heuristics because it's impossible to cover the whole space. So, some problems can take exponential time to find the optimal solution, but but even yeah, um, and 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 because of that, we sometimes just use the heuristics. We generally find some rules of thumb that give us generally a, a good enough uh, solution. Maybe it's not the perfect solution, like a good enough solution, or maybe it gives us the solution 99% of the times, not 100% of the times, but that's good enough generally if we find it most of the time. Even though we don't have guarantees, a theoretical guarantee that we're always going to find a solution. Um, so this is what we mean by NP complete. Even though the problem is NP complete, we still have good heuristics for it. And that's, that's what AI also is. AI is also about finding heuristics because many of these problems will not be, um, will not have a theoretical, good theoretical solutions. Um, yes, so, so, so one thing in this course is that we will focus on, on the rational agents uh, paradigm. So, um, and 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 we'll we'll talk a bit more in the, in the, in the next class what we mean by rational agents, but it's just like agents that act rationally according to some utility function, basically. So, uh, um, and we have three major components in the course. So we have a presentation, uh, how we're going to represent the problem in a particular structure, how and then a reasoning, how we're going to reason given that representation, and 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 finally how we're going to do how we're going to do learning, how we're going to learn. Uh, in that particular environment, given that representation. Um, so these will be three components we will uh, cover a lot in the course. So um, what do we mean by rational decisions? So, because uh, we, we've spoken about rationality in the past, uh, so in the past few slides. So by rational, we mean that the agent uh, wants to maximally achieve some predefined goals. And there's also the idea of a utility that comes with a goal. So you reach a particular state, it has a particular utility. And like, for example, oh, you, um, yeah, you, you earn some reward, for example. Like if you, like, for example, like food item, like if you're like a, a, a robot as an animal, you walk around the forest and you find some food and that, that's the utility, like how, how much food you find and so on. That's an example of utility, but in general, yeah. Um, Utility is a bit more more of a complex uh, uh, concept. I, I I have much more to say there, but I'll, I'll I won't go right now into it. We'll we'll come back to this uh, in the course. Um, but the idea is that being rational here means maximizing your expected utility. So you maximize the, how much utility you get into the into the future, how you expect into the future. Um, so um, yeah. Um, so how do we design rational agents? Well, we'll 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 talk a bit more in depth into the class. We'll 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 do some reinforcement learning and macro decision processes. But the idea is that we have an agent that is our robot, and it has some sensors. So the robot has sensors. It can like for example a video camera, some other movement sensors, maybe a lidar, uh, which is a lidar is basically what uh, self-driving cars have, and they basically like get information about what objects are in, in the front of them and how much, how far away they are. So it's like a it's like a like a radar. Think of it like kind of like a radar for like cars, for example. They have all these kinds of sensors, for example, and and there's an environment in which the agent uh, are uh, lives, and basically the uh, the agent can uh, take actions in the environment. It can decide to move forward or turn right or turn left. And all these are actions that we can take in the environment. And and then the environment um, changes uh, also uh, like around the, the object and so on. So uh, this is generally the framework we're going we're gonna to operate in. Um, 
Yes. So, um, so, so, so generally, the, our course here is about the general AI techniques that 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 operate for a variety type of problem types, uh, and we're going to use this this framework of uh, agents and environments. But you see how general it is and how powerful it is, and we can apply it for all kinds of types of uh, problems. The environment can be the game of chess. The, the environment can also be the indoor. Uh, uh, in the you know indoor layout of your house where the cooking robot uh, lives or or it can be for example uh, the environment can be the outdoors for example it can be like for a self driving car it can be all the streets it has to navigate and so on but it's the same type of paradigm uh, it's, it's it's an agent that lives in an environment and it takes actions um, um, and we also learn to rec uh, so another thing I want you to learn in the course is to learn to recognize when and how a new problem can be solved with the particular technique. So another thing is you know you you all be for example afterwards I don't know researchers in a, in AI you might be going to industry you might be staying in academia you'll be solving critical problems and you need to understand what um, what method to apply what what you know are you going to apply a deep neural net are you going to apply a Support vector machine. Are you going to apply a classical uh, planning uh, path finding solution? Uh, you know, over, over graphs. Uh, you know, are you going to find uh, apply? You know, all, all of these are market decision process. Uh, all of these uh, um, are things you, you have to know them beforehand, and then you recognize when and how to apply them. Um, so we'll be using Pac-Man as a, as an environment for this class in particular, and this is in particular for the assignments. We have four assignments, um, and uh, and both of them will revolve around the game of Pac-Man. So I'm sure you've seen this game before and you've played it, and um, it's quite fun. So and again, the same kind of paradigm applies also with Pac-Man. We have an environment, which is that this little this this kind of board, and we have like an agent, which is our little. A yellow guy that eats um, those uh, those things, and then basically have those kind of like ghosts that kind of like uh, try to, to catch it and so on. So um, yeah, and and when we'll be building uh, various agents here, various AI agents that can play this game as efficiently as possible. Uh, so it's, it's going to be super fun, and I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Um, so. Um, and we'll, do, we'll have some lab time uh, that we'll announce uh, sometime next week. And I, and I will announce that shortly. Um, so within the next few days, uh, when I start with the lab time. And, and this lab time will be for you to um, to have to set up the game, basically to, to, to learn how to set up the game, to make to get, get you up to speed with the, with the code base of, of this particular environment. Um, so these are the, the key topics we'll be going through in the class. Um, and I, let me see. I have to like um, go quickly over here over the next one. But uh, we, we're going to go over, over through many things like uh, search problems, adversarial uh, uh, problems, market decision process, MDPs. We will do some reinforcement learning. Then the second part of the class, we'll do some uh, modeling uh, of structural uncertainty. We'll do we're doing logic. We're doing Bayesian neural networks and some machine learning. And throughout, we'll also have several applications of in natural language processing, in vision, in robotics, and in games. Um, and and these are the key prerequisites, as I said before. I want I, I, it will be important if you know basic things about graphs, depth first search, breadth first search. If you have if you understand also like uh, data structures, like lists, trees, uh, hash tables. These are important to know. Um, some basic concepts about computational complexity. What's the difference between an uh, O n and an uh, O two to the power of n algorithm? So one is polynomial, one is exponential complexity. Some basic logic and basic probabilities, and and also based on basic maths uh, that we have to do. We have a quiz that is on Canvas, and and this is a self-diagnostic quiz. So so do try to to do it um, uh, by Friday. So it's not graded, but it's required. So do submit it by Friday, five p.m. And we we we'll come back to that. Also, I mentioned a few more things about it on uh, on Wednesday. Um, so this is uh, almost this. So, so what are the course logistics? So we uh, will be communicating on Canvas and on Piazza, and um, and we'll have a several. We have worksheets, we have quizzes and programming assignments. Um, and again, and there's a few of them that are already due by Friday. This Friday, so the worksheet zero and quiz zero are due by Friday, five p.m. And the pro uh, problem sheet zero is due by next week on Tuesday at five p.m. So these are all on Canvas already. Um, 
yeah, the, the, the quiz is still diagnostic quiz. So the quiz is basically for you to, to make sure that you know the basic prerequisites of the course, uh, ask some questions about maths and so on. So these are all, all good. Um, and um, yeah, this is the grading we're going to be using for the class uh, and how my, what was the split for each of them. We have a late day policy. Uh, do do read through it. I know there's also a, a, there's a lot of this on the syllabus on this. So so don't uh, yeah do read the syllabus uh, that I posted on Canvas. So uh, so you only have seven late days, um, but we're not going to give more than that. So and each of you is allowed to use them as you want for your assignments. Uh, but you have a maximum seven, and we're not going to give any additional. So make sure you do not uh, exhaust your late days uh, as as the term goes. Uh, so do keep them especially for. The final assignments. Uh, um, so, so you have these uh, like this they can use, but uh, we're not going to give additional ones. So, do ask my TAs, uh, for example, for any other questions about uh, about these uh, assignments and so on. Um, and finally, so so this just just a just a couple more minutes. Uh, I know. So how do I do? How do how do you ensure you do well in the course? So make sure you attend the class. Make sure you participate uh, actively in the class and in online discussions. Take notes. Uh, do do reading, for example, of the textbook and and all these uh, assignments, the quizzes. Uh, do all the quizzes. Do all the worksheets. Um, do set aside 20 minutes uh, before each lecture to skim through the chapter. So, um, and I'll try to post them uh, before each lecture. I'll try to post like the chapters that, that you can read. Um, and then you know, after that, you go back and read the text in depth. Uh, start the worksheets early um, and uh, start the programming, especially very early. Do, do start everything early. Do not leave everything to last minute. Um, Again, we have you have only seven days uh, that you can use, seven late days that you can use throughout. We're not going to give any additional ones, so make sure you do not use those early on. Um, do practice problems, yeah, and and yeah, um, and study for all the quizzes and exams. And then you also have to start form study groups. So we'll be working together in, te in teams of three, uh, and 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 we'll get back to that uh, later on. But basically, you'll have to make teams for the program assignments. So um, we'll come back to that. Um, yeah. So I'll so do participate in the class, please. But this is this is uh, this is a, a very active class. I want you all to participate in person, so not on Zoom. Zoom is only if uh, if you are sick, for example, if you have an emergency, and or if you're out of town for for some reason. But this is an in-person class, so do come, and we will also be working in teams, so it will be very important to uh, to come in class and do give me feedback and so on. Um, uh, so as I said, uh, so the final uh, this is the final slide. So um, so again, there's several things I do on Friday, five p.m. The quiz, quiz zero, and worksheet zero, and uh, and there's also a Python tutorial that is available on Canvas that is due on Monday, 5 p.m. So do do that as well. Um, that's, that's program assignment zero. So they all, yeah, and the and the program assignments account towards your grade. So make sure you don't miss them. But the others are also mandatory. Uh, so uh, you have to submit everything. Um, yeah. So I think let, let me let me check. Uh, this is this is all I had for today. Uh, I'm looking through the questions on the chat. Um, will you post the slides? Yes. So I've already posted the slides on on Canvas. There's a link on Canvas. You can see the uh, the slides. So you, uh, and generally, I'll post slides before every class at the beginning, right right before the class starts. Generally, um, um, yeah. What is um, is it one quiz and worship each that is dropped? Yes, yeah, so we will do that. We will drop the the quiz. You will drop one quiz, which is the your lowest mark on the quiz. We'll drop it. Uh, and the same for the worksheet. So uh, yeah, so the, your lowest mark on uh, on the quiz and worship will be dropped. Um, yeah, for all programming assignments, are just the last one. Let's, let's talk about that later on. When will get a password for the submission page? Uh, so ask my ask the TAs on that. They'll help you with the uh, with submitting uh, the, the assignments and uh, yeah and the quizzes. Um, yeah. Um, what if we're on a waitlist and we cannot access Canvas? Yes. So 
I try to add it even if you're on a waitlist, I can still add it to Canvas. So I, let me let me look into that. I I, I think there's a way to add to those of you on the waitlist on Canvas. So I'll, I'll I'll try to do that by by Wednesday by the next class. Um, uh, discussion sessions start next week. So the, that's what I mean by sections. So, so they will be uh, starting next week. Um, so not this week. So so this week uh, we will not have office hours or discussion sessions. Uh, they will start from next week. And from next week we also have office hours. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'll give more clarification by by next uh, my next class. Uh, but for now for now I would say make make sure you focus on these things on these three things that are due on Friday on Monday. Um, yeah. Um, Section discussion is not mandatory, uh, but highly recommended. Again, the TAs will be there. So, so the, the, and I think what we'll do is that for those discussion sessions, we'll, we'll make them also office hours. So the same time, so that the TAs will go through some concepts, and then we'll, that will lead afterwards into office hours. Basically, so, so you can ask any kind of questions about uh, about uh, about the course. Um, uh, okay. Professor. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I oh, this is from um, kind of earlier, but you mentioned heuristic. Um, could you yeah. just like explain that really fast? A heuristic I have an idea. is basically like a rule of thumb. Um, it's, it's the best mm. way I can describe it. It's, it's like imagine it's like um, it's generally a good idea to do that. That well, well. You know, there's rules of thumb in life in general in so many ways. Like, for example, imagine yeah. you're hiking in the mountains, for example, and you're trying to get go down, for example, trying to, to reach back to the to the city, for uh, to your, like, you know, the city, for example. So so a rule of thumb is to always, like, go down. It's to never go up because you might, yeah. be going, you know, when you go, whenever you go up, you're going higher and higher towards the top of the mountain. You know, like it's the not, obvious it's not, goal. For example, sorry. Like the obvious goal, kind of. It's it's like it's like a simplified decision you can make in that instant. Like you don't have perfect information about the, the the your environment, like the whole landscape, and you don't know if sometimes you might have to go up to actually then go down and reach your destination. But uh, uh. let's say the rule of thumb is to always try to go down. It's like a rule of thumb, but you know it. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm getting it. So like a heuristic is kind of like that. A heuristic would be like, oh, always try to go down if you're hiking to reach the, the, the city, for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but sometimes you might have to go up and down. But but that's, you know, yeah. You, you never know what could be behind the hill, kind of, to, to, you know. You yeah. Global information. So therefore use a heuristic uh, because it's uh, it's intractable to know everything like about your landscape. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh -huh. Okay, so so that, that's it. I think uh, I'll see you all on on Wednesday. Um, um, sorry, I I just had a quick question regarding the book. Uh, I saw there was a link posted on the the syllabus. Um, is that like the link that's the that's like the actual book? It's like on that web page, or do I have to go find? Yeah, it yeah. Let, 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 I, I I'll replace a link with an actual PDF. How about that? And I, yeah, I'll I'll put I'll put an yeah the, the exact PDF on uh, on there. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, Sounds yeah, good. yeah. Sorry about that. I, I, I took it. That was that link was from last year's uh, course, and uh, and uh, and I'll put uh, put a PDF link to it. Yeah, I'll replace that. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, professor. Thank you, professor. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. See. See you all on Wednesday. Take care. Bye.